Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take your seats. <clears throat> now, those of you who are joining us on the live stream, this is a week-long advanced retreat that we're doing in Bonn, Germany. We have a lot of different cultures here, and we have been in the deep study of consciousness, in the deep study of how to affect the nature of reality. We have uh, crossed a great river, uh, and we are at the end of our event. And I want to take some time and talk to you about a teaching that many, many people in the last um, four months or so that I've taught have experienced really profound results with. And, and it's something that I personally do uh, when I reach a situation in my life where I don't have any answers. Everything that I'm doing isn't working. And I think to myself, surely there must be a possibility in the quantum field that already exists that is a solution that I haven't thought of. And if I don't know the answer, then I have to move to the unknown. How many people are with me so far? So then, how many people in this room, or how many people viewing uh, this live stream, have situations in their life where they've done everything they have possibly could to change it? M matter to matter, they've hired experts, they've had counseling, they've hired hitmen, they've done everything, and nothing has changed the situation. You have a few of those, yes? So then, let's start with just understanding the nature of our biology. Your brain is a memory bank. It's a record of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment. We could say that your brain is a record or an artifact of the past. So most people, when they wake up in the morning and they start their day, new day, a brand new day where there's so many different possibilities, the first thing they do is they get their brain working and they start activating circuits in their brain that are connected to memories of the past. So they activate the memories and a memory is a record of the past. So they think about the problems in their life and those problems are connected to certain people and certain things and certain times and places. And every one of those problems then has an emotion associated with them. So if thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of your body and how you think and how you feel creates a state of being, if you're living by familiar and same thoughts and you're feeling the same emotions and emotions are a record of the past, we could say that most people wake up in the morning and their entire state of being is in the past, in the familiar past. How many people are with me? So then. If your biology is in the familiar past, then the next thing most people do is they start to crave the predictable future. They start to want to create the same experiences over again because they can predict the feeling of every experience. And over time, they stay safe in the known. How many people are with me? Turn the person next to you and explain. <clears throat>
So then the memories that you can call upon or recall the easiest are called long-term memories. And the stronger the emotion you feel from some past event in your life, the more altered you feel inside of you from some external event, the moment you notice a change in your internal state, it captures all the brain's attention and we narrow our focus on the cause and in that moment we freeze an image and the brain takes a snapshot and we begin to emboss circuitry in our brain. And then people then recall the event, they talk about the event, they think about the event over and over again, and they're firing and wiring the same circuits in the same way, and they begin to hardwire their brain into the past. And when they talk about their problems, and they think about them, and they remember them, they're combining an image with an emotion, and they start the conditioning process. And conditioning is based on the past. And if you do it enough times, the body begins to believe that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, the body as the unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the actual experience in your life that's creating an emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. The body's believing it's in the same past experience. So then if you think you're a failure, you feel like a failure. If you wake up in the morning feeling like a failure, you're gonna think thoughts equal to how you feel. And people get caught in these loops of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking. And the repetition of doing this over and over again, the conditioning process, conditions the body to memorize that emotion. And now the body literally is in the past. So then you can't create a new future holding on to the emotions of the past. And in fact, that person, we could say, could never see many opportunities in their future because they're viewing their future completely in the biology of the past and they won't see possibilities. They're only looking for knowns. Are you with me still? So then crisis, trauma, disease, diagnosis, loss, betrayal, something has to cause us then to wake up and it's usually crisis or emergency where a person reaches their lowest level where they just can't keep any of their agreements any longer. They no longer want to see the same people. They don't want to go to dinner anymore. They're not answering their texts. They're not even watching their favorite television show. They just stopped. And that's the moment they start paying attention to how they're thinking. They start noticing how they're acting or how they've acted, and they look, my goodness, I've been feeling suffering for the last 20 years. I didn't even know it was suffering or guilt. It's just the way I feel. And the act of being coming conscious of your unconscious states of mind and body means now you're disconnecting from the programs, disconnecting from your biology, and now you're the observer of those programs. And now you're becoming conscious and you're objectifying your subjective self. Yes or no? So then that is unfamiliar territory. That is the unknown for most people. And the hardest part about change in most people's lives is not making the same choice as they did, they did the day before. And the moment you decide to make a different choice or do something differently, that's when you're leaving the known familiar territory. And if the body has been conditioned to be the mind, now the servant is the master. And what happens is, the moment you decide to step into that unknown, the body starts influencing the mind. And here come the programs, because in that place of uncertainty, unpredictability, discomfort, the body is saying, I want to return back to the known because I can't predict the next moment. And it starts influencing the same thoughts. And in fact, the thoughts in our head, the chatter in our head gets louder. And if we respond to that same thought in the same way, the same thought leads to the same choice. The same choice leads to the same behavior. The same behavior creates the same experience. And the same experience then will produce the same familiar feeling. And people say, this feels right. No, it feels familiar. You're returning back to the known. And the door closes to the unknown. Are you with me still? So then... It makes sense then that in order to change then, you have to be greater than your body that has been conditioned to be the mind. That you have to demonstrate a will that's greater than those programs. That you have to recondition your body to a new mind. 
but then most people get up in the morning and they're beginning to think about all the experiences they want in their life and they can predict the feeling of every one of those experiences. So they start looking forward to the same familiar future based on the same familiar past. So the thought leads to the same choice, the same choice leads to the same behavior, the same behavior produces the same experience, same experience produces the same emotion and it reaffirms the same identity which influences the same thought. And if you wake up every morning and you follow the same exact routine, we could say that the moment you wake up in the morning and you start thinking about going to the kitchen and getting a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, you're placing your attention on the future, a place in consciousness out, outside of you. So there's one point of consciousness, you, and you have another thought in your mind of going to the kitchen and getting a cup of coffee or tea a second point of consciousness. And when you begin to hold your attention on that, your body begins to follow your mind to a known. Yes or no? And as you move through space, you experience time. It takes you time to get over there. So then if you keep doing this every single day and then you take a shower and then you drive to work the same way and you do the exact same things, your body over time will go on autopilot and now it's dragging you into a predictable future based on what you did in the past and now you've lost your free will to that program and you're headed for a genetic destiny. How many people understand? So then if you're waking up in the morning and you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then we could say then, for the most part, you're left with the memories of the past. And if you believe this idea, if your brain is a record of everything that's known in your life and you're not creating a future, the moment you wake up in the morning and you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing that you did yesterday, all of a sudden now, everything in your environment is influencing how you're thinking and feeling. Because you have a neurological network for your boss, for your, for your partner, for your kids, for your home, for where you work, where you sleep. <clears throat> All the problems in your life are mapped neurologically in the brain. So your environment is made up of bodies and people and objects and things and places. And so when you begin to interact with your environment, it is your environment then that is controlling unconsciously how you're thinking and feeling. Now here's the challenge though. How you think and feel creates your life. That's the quantum model of reality. So if you're thinking equal to everything that's known in your life, then you're reaffirming the same reality because you're thinking in the same way and feeling in the same way. How many people understand? Now, every thought has a frequency. Every thought produces an energy. So we could say then from a quantum perspective, you're thinking the same known thoughts the majority of the time that are producing the same frequencies, so then the same frequency is the same energy and your life shouldn't change. And the only way your life can change is to change your energy. And nobody changes until they change their energy. How many people understand? Turn the person next to you and explain.
So if your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, and your personality creates your personal reality, then in order for you to create a new personal reality, a new life, you would have to change your personality, yes or no? You would have to change the way you think, change the way you act, and change the way you feel. And most people in their lives are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality. And it doesn't work. And the repetition of doing the same exact routine every single day, thinking the same way, acting the same way, feeling the same way over and over again, by the time we're 35 years old, we go on autopilot. And 95% of who we are at that point is just a set of programs. And so the body then is dragging somebody in the predictable future based on what they did in the past. And imagine this, this has happened to all of us. You have a thought in your routine day that you're going to go do something, and that thought is going to lead to a, ch a choice, and the choice is going to lead to a behavior, and the behavior is going to lead to experience. The, ex the experience produces the payoff. And the payoff is the feeling or the emotion, and all of a sudden, something happens where it doesn't work out, and you're not getting the feeling that reaffirms your identity, then most people replace it with a pretty uncomfortable feeling. They get angry, they get frustrated, they get impatient, they get disrespectful because now the body is craving the feeling and they're not getting the feeling that they want. And they don't believe that they have any control over how they feel. Are you with me still? So then, if your personality creates your personal reality, and you're waking up every single morning and you're thinking the same way, acting the same way, and feeling the same way, and it's your environment, all the people and objects and things and places in your life that are controlling your thoughts and feelings, then we could say that your personal reality is creating your personality. And you're not thinking, acting, or feeling greater than your current known reality. And so then now we can say that a person is victim to the circumstances in their life because they'll tell you it's that person or that thing that's making me think, feel, and act this way. How many people are with me? But we say then that we create the world outside of us by the way we think and feel. So then the challenges and the problems in our lives are created from a certain level of consciousness or unconsciousness. Yes or no? And Einstein said, hey, you want to resolve that problem? You've got to go to a greater level of consciousness than the consciousness that's created it. And that's evolution. Would you agree? So then, the problems and conditions that we have in our life, in order for us to be greater than those problems and conditions, we would have to be greater than the body to change, to be greater than the body, to be greater than our environment. That means don't let our environment, we no longer react and think in predictable ways our environment no longer controls our feelings and thoughts. And then in order for us to truly change, we couldn't live in the program of the predictable future or the familiar past. We would have to be in the present moment and stop all of those programs. Yes or no? Turn the poster next to you and explain that.
So, if the problems in our life are created from some level of consciousness or unconsciousness, then it would make sense then that every time you become conscious of an unconscious thought, you're changing your level of awareness. Would you agree? And you can't have consciousness without energy. So then as you begin to become aware of the way you're thinking, you're moving to a greater level of consciousness than the consciousness that created the problem. Yes or no? Come on. And if you can begin to observe how you act or how you speak, and you can begin to become conscious or aware, would you agree then the more conscious or aware that you become of how you act and you want to change it, the less unconscious you'll go in your normal day? Yes or no? And if you've been living by certain emotions that bring you to a lower denominator, to a lower level of energy, to cause you to feel more like matter and less like energy, more separate from everyone and everything, including your dreams, and all of a sudden you're sitting and you're observing your feelings and you're watching your body go through a gamut of different sensations and feelings, and all you're doing is sitting there, would you agree if you can begin to observe it you're becoming less of the body as the mind and more of the consciousness uh, separate from the body. Yes or no? And you're moving to a greater level of consciousness. So what have we been doing all week? This has been a great study in one whole week because people then come to an event and they have all these problems in their lives. And all of those problems primarily come from people because that's what makes up the majority of our living environment. And so the stronger the emotion that people feel from the problems in their life, the more they pay attention to the person that's creating them. And we could say then they're giving their life force, they're giving their energy away to that person because where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And so now you're giving your power away to that person. And that's the energy you need to create a new reality. How many people are with me? So you're sitting in the presence of that emotion and your body's off schedule. It loves to judge at around 11 o'clock in the morning, but you're off schedule. There's no one to judge. You're sitting there with your blindfolds on. And your body says, well, there's got to be somebody to judge. How about the person next to me? How about the person in front of me? How about Dr. Joe? I've got to find somebody to judge. <laughs> and your body is just looking for the hit of those chemicals. So then you would have to agree with me then. And when you start thinking about the problems in your life when you first get here, then your attention is moving away from you. And if that's the case then, if you can lower the volume to that emotion, it would take some level of energy to do that. A level of energy that's greater than the energy of that emotion in order to change it. That means you've got to demonstrate a will that's greater than the body is the mind. And that takes an effort. Are you with me still? It's so much easier to go unconscious. Or if I keep asking you to return back to the present moment and your attention is on this person all the time or this problem in, all the time and you keep stopping the thought that's connected to them, then you'll stop producing the emotion. And the body is going to crave that emotion and the brain is going to crave that connection. And there's a withering. There's a biological death that goes on. There's, there's, there's a dissonance that's creating neurologically in the brain that's disorder, that's chaos. That's, that's information being released out of the system. And now energy is changing. Neurocircuitry is changing. Neurochemistry is changing. Hormones are changing. Gene expression is changing. The body's in flux. It's in change. And the chaos that's created from that, most people can't handle it because they don't know what to do with it. So the solution then is to get up and get on your computer and surf or watch TV or do something to distract you from that feeling that makes it go away. So over time then we become reliant on our outer world to change our inner world. How many people understand? So then think about this. When you lower the volume to that emotion and you take your attention off the problems in your life and you do it with a, a level of passion and keep returning to the present moment, you're going to begin to weaken the energetic bonds with everyone and everything in your life. And when you have an energy that's greater than the energy that's holding you together, keep holding, you, holding you connected to every person and everything in your life, there's going to be a break of that energy and that energy is coming back to you. That's chaotic energy. That's difficult energy for the body to deal with unless you know how to apply a formula, unless you know how to create order out of disorder. Are you with me still? 
So then, throw in the hormones of stress. Living in stress is living in survival, and when you're in stress and you're in survival, the very chemicals of stress cause you to, cause you to heighten your senses and narrow your focus on the cause. And now you're putting all of your attention on the material world. Now, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And the rush of adrenaline that's created from the hormones of stress arouses the body to such a degree that you begin to believe that you're your body. It rouses the brain to put all of the attention on the outer world because that's where the danger is. And now when we're under stress, we can't predict something, we can't control something, or we have the perception that something's going to get worse. The moment we signal those, those chemicals, now all of a sudden now, in survival, we're doing our best to control and predict everything in our life, to bring it all back together. And so we begin to become over-focused and we shift our attention from people to things, to objects, the problems, the places. And every one of those has a neurological network in the brain. And the act of doing that causes the brain to become compartmentalized. And the brain starts firing in a very incoherent way. And when the brain is incoherent, you're incoherent. And when the brain isn't working right, you're not working right. So then the very rush of those stress hormones draws from this invisible field of vital life force, this invisible field surrounding the body of energy, and it's turning it into chemistry. And chronic stress keeps tapping the body's vital resource, and in time we start feeling more like matter and less like energy, more like particle and less like wave. And when you feel like you are matter, trying to change matter, there's only a certain number of things you can do. You can fight for it. You can race to get it. You can compete. You can manipulate. You can tr control, predict. You can do the basic things because we only have a certain number of resources when we're matter trying to change matter. Are you with me still? So then the very chemicals of stress, when we narrow our focus on an object or a thing or a person, the very nature of narrowing our focus on matter causes us to feel separate from everyone and everything. So the very chemicals of stress heighten the senses and now we're materialists and we have separation from everybody and everything. We don't experience connection in any way. And in fact, when you're in the state of survival, you're not going to learn, you're not going to want to create, you're not going to want to go within, you're not going to want to open your heart, you're not going to want to be vulnerable. It's not the time to do that. In stress, it's time to run, to hide, or to fight. And so people spend 70% of their life living in the state. And as they begin to get caught up in these chemicals, what they start doing is, out of the infinite possibilities in the quantum field that they can begin to create, in stress, you will select the worst case scenario and when you select the worst case scenario, you're in survival because in survival, if you prepare for the worst, there's better chances of surviving. So people are always picking the worst reality in their mind and combining a thought with the emotion and they're conditioning their body into a genetic destiny. How many people are with me? So then, separation means I'm here and you're there and if you look any different than me, then I'm going to experience a little bit more separation. And if you have a different skin color or you're a different race or you, you're, you look different than me, then I'm going to experience more separation. And then there's me here, one point of consciousness, and you there, another point of consciousness. But then there's me here, and there's my dreams. And where do we place our dreams? Way out there. Because we experience time linear. So we make an estimate in our mind. It's going to take me a lot of time to get what I want. So here's one point of consciousness, and then your dreams are another point of consciousness, way over there. And it's going to cause you to drag your body through space every single day to go to work, to pay off all the dreams that you're creating because you're matter trying to change matter. How many people understand? Turn the person next to you and explain.
So then in stress, your brain is firing very incoherently, and at the same time, your heart is racing because the adrenaline from stress is telling you to run, fight, and hide, but social mores say you can't do any of those things. So now you're stepping on the gas and the brake at the same time, and your heart starts to race and starts to fire very incoherently. And when your heart is incoherent, you stop trusting yourself. You stop believing in yourself. You start be stop believing in your future and your dreams because this center right here is the center from which we create. And when energy moves in this center, it begins to create more coherence in the heart. All these centers below, the centers of the body, excuse my art here, but this is the body here. <laughs> it looked really good at one point. Our sexuality, our consumption of food, our, uh, our ability to use our will to overcome the conditions in our environment. Most people live by these centers here. These are centers of awareness, centers of energy. And each one, every thought that you have produces a frequency. So this is what we call the zero point field. It is the quantum field, the unified field, the energy that connects everything material. It is the consciousness of the all in all. It is oneness, wholeness, universal mind, infinite intelligence, zero point field, the unified field, source, observer, the void, the fertile void, all possibilities, the eternal now, the infinite unknown, the very life force that holds everything together. And it's a unifying field. And scientists have been trying to unify the principles and the energy of the universe to explain how matter exists. Are you with me still? So energy then, the zero point field, slows down in frequency and it reaches a certain point and at this level there's an explosion called the Big Bang. And all of a sudden energy can't slow any, anymore before it divides and becomes polarized. And the patterns of everything material exist at the speed of light. And it's the patterns then that slow energy down to take form and structure that ultimately appear as matter. Now, all of us, the divine aspect of ourselves, came from this universal intelligence and we came all the way down into density. And this is the realm of our senses. And we can experience the three-dimensional reality with our senses and we spend our whole life being a somebody or having some type of body or knowing someone or being someone, owning certain things, living somewhere in some time, and this becomes the identity. Are you with me still? So then... People then spend the majority of their life living in this way and they experience from matter the greatest separation from the unified field. Here is source and if you're living as a body local in space and time, you're experiencing a separation between you as a consciousness and the consciousness of the unified field. So when you're living in a body in space and time, it takes a long time for your dreams to happen. Are you with me still? So if you're thinking certain thoughts and certain thoughts produce certain feelings, you're taking a thought and you're beginning to store it as energy or emotion in one of these centers. And most people are thinking in these first three centers. And when they do, they're storing energy in their first three centers and their body's being conditioned to be the mind. It takes opening this center to begin to cr the creative process. This is the center of oneness. This is the center of wholeness. This is the union of polarity and duality. And if you can't get energy into your heart then, for the most part then, it requires a coherent brain and a coherent heart to begin to affect the nature of reality, to begin to affect matter. Are you with me still? So then every thought that you think produces a frequency. And most people's frequencies, most people's thoughts are in this realm right here. And it would make sense then, if they're thinking lower thought frequencies, then it's going to take a long time for their dreams to come true. How many people understand? Turn the person next to you and explain.
Now, how many people are understanding, yes? So if you're reacting, if you're reacting to the problems in your life or that box reality, that reality that hasn't changed, no matter what you did, you tried, you forced, you prayed, you hoped, you wished, you hired people, you fired people, you've forgiven, you've done all those things and still it hasn't changed. That's because the moment you come back to your senses, you're consciously or unconsciously having certain thoughts that are connected to that problem that are producing a certain frequency or a certain feeling and you're producing the same energy every single day and your life stays the same. Are you with me still? Think about this. Think about that problem in your life or that condition is ne that has never changed. What are your thoughts about it? It's not something pleasant, is it? And what are the feelings associated with it? There aren't feelings that you don't typically want to live by, but you live by those feelings every single day. Yes or no? So then you're reacting consciously or unconsciously to the thought of the problem or the actual problem over and over again, you are broadcasting an electromagnetic signature into your field. But if you're creating, and those thoughts are these lower frequency thoughts, then you have very little effect on matter. So now you've got to go make the problem happen. You've got to go change it with you. You've got to get your identity or personality involved in it. Are you with me still? Come on. So then we found out in the research that we've done, and we now know there's a formula that when a person takes all of their attention off their body, all of their attention off the people in their life, all of their attention off the things they own, their cell phone, their computer, their car, every object or material thing, take their attention off their home, where they sleep, where they work, they take all the attention off where they're even sitting, and they take their attention off the predictable future or the familiar past, and they find the sweet spot of the generous present moment, then they're disinvesting all of their attention and energy out of this three-dimensional reality, and they're moving in the opposite direction towards the unified field. And now, when they become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, they have to pass through different layers of emotions that are, have memories, different frequencies that are carrying different, in, that's carrying different information, and they got to pass through these layers that have become their identity. And most people, don't know how to make their way through, so they do a little bit and then they come back to their identity, the same personality. Most of you, almost all of you, have traversed through these frequencies and reached the point where you can become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, and that is the moment you are pure consciousness and you now are no longer associating with anything in three-dimensional reality. And if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, then you're disinvesting all of your attention and energy out of this three-dimensional reality off of everything that's known and you're making a choice to go to a field where all possibilities exist, the unknown, the quantum field, above the speed of light. And Einstein said, E equals MC squared. Anything that travels, matter traveling faster than the speed of light is going to turn into energy. And this tends to create more connection, more unity, while matter creates more separation. And as you get closer and closer to the unified field, you will experience more oneness, more wholeness, more connection, you'll experience a greater level of mind. How many people understand? Now, this is important because in order for us to do that, a person has to go from a narrow focus on matter and begin to widen and broaden their focus on nothing but space, on nothing, on a, on a void of anything material. And when you do that properly and you begin to open your awareness, most of you experience this, when you start sensing space, you're no longer thinking. And if you're no longer thinking, you're no longer analyzing. And if you're no longer analyzing, you're no longer activating these circuits in your brain. And when you no longer activate these circuits in your brain, you begin to suppress the memory bank of your known identity called the neocortex. Are you with me still? And if you do that properly, your brain waves move from that agitated, aroused, high beta state into a mid-range beta state. And then you may move a little bit and then you, you, if you're addicted to those stress hormones or you're conditioned to those emotions, and then all of a sudden you may move back into high beta and you get frustrated and impatient with yourself and you want to quit and there's disorder in the brain and then you go back again to the next meditation and you do it again. 
And as you start opening your awareness and your brain waves start to change from beta to alpha, all of a sudden you start crossing the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And now you're entering the subconscious programs. Now you're entering the operating system. Are you with me still? And as you open your focus and you start connecting to energy, to the unified field, to nothing, its signature is oneness and wholeness. And when you start processing that frequency, all of a sudden the brain starts getting more organized. It starts getting more coherent. It starts resonating in cadence. It starts to synchronize. And all of a sudden different compartments of the brain that were subdivided start to integrate and become more whole. And you start feeling more like yourself. And not only do you produce alpha brainwave patterns or theta brainwave patterns, you produce coherent and organized patterns. And all of a sudden, the brain starts moving into more coherence or psychic union. By the same means, we know that if you place your attention in your heart, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Out of the infinite possibilities in the quantum field you can put your attention on, you put all of your attention right here. And if you can regulate and learn how to create elevated emotions, these emotions down here are pain and guilt and shame and unworthiness and suffering and anger and frustration and patience and resentment and competition and envy and jealousy and, and importance. These are, these are all those slower frequency emotions. And when you cross over into oneness or wholeness, energy moves into your heart. And you start feeling gratitude, appreciation, kindness, care, joy, bliss, ecstasy. These are faster frequencies, and that's how you know you're getting closer to the unified field. Are you with me still? And when energy moves into the heart, instead of energy being used in these first three centers, consuming and turning into chemistry, once energy makes it into the heart, and the heart begins to become activated, and you can train your body to condition it to an elevated emotion, the heart all of a sudden starts to beat in coherence, in rhythm. And once energy makes it to the heart, it goes right up to the brain. That's what the research shows. And once energy is in the heart and the heart starts becoming coherent, now all of a sudden it begins to produce a measurable magnetic field. The field around the body begins to expand. And now you become more energy and less matter, more wave and less particle. And that energy, that elevated emotion, can carry the thought of your health it can carry the thought of your wealth. Suffering cannot carry the thought of your health. It carries a different set of thoughts. It's a different consciousness. How many people understand? So then, the more we live by these emotions down here, the more we experience separation, and it takes a longer amount of time for things to happen. You've been practicing opening your awareness You've been practicing heart coherence and your brain and heart start becoming more coherent and all of a sudden you feel less separate from everyone and everything. That's why you're getting along with everybody here. Have you noticed that? <laughs> so then when you're in this place and you feel it, <laughs> this is a different consciousness. It's a different energy than these other centers. This is the center of selflessness. This is the center in which we give. This is the center in which we trust. This is the center in which we create, we love. This is the center of joy, a whole different consciousness. And you have to move out of survival in order to get there, which means you're going to have to break the conditioning and the addiction to those emotions. Are you with me still? So then, check this out. This is the realm of space-time. This is the three-dimensional reality that we live in. We call it the universe. And in this known universe, there's an infinite amount of space. Space is eternal. It goes on forever. And because space is eternal, we experience time as we move through space. So here's one point of consciousness, Joe Dispenza. And then there's the other point of consciousness. I'm putting my awareness on the door. And as I move my body through space, I experience time. How many people are with me? So everything in the material world occupies a place or a space in time. And we can say that everything is height and depth and width. And everything in the three-dimensional world is made up of matter. And this is the realm of the senses. We would call it everything local in space and time. It's occupying space and time. So then what makes up the material world? Bodies, things, places, people, objects. It's the particle in quantum physics. 
And so then when you associate in your known three-dimensional linear reality, you're the somebody, the someone, the something, somewhere in some time, and you're identifying or creating an identity based on everything known in your life. We could say that you're a body in the environment and time. And because you live in a three-dimensional reality heightened by the senses and the hormones of stress, we experience separation or duality or polarity. In other words, we're waiting for our healing to occur to feel gratitude. We're waiting for our wealth to really feel abundance, which means we're experiencing lack the entire time. So then if you're feeling lack and you're waiting, you're not creating. It makes sense then if that lack is driving certain thoughts equal to that lack, then you're creating more lack, yes or no? And you're under the illusion that when it happens, something outside of you is going to change your internal state. Then that will give you relief. But if you're not creating reality and the lack is driving more thoughts, then most people spend their whole life living in lack. How many people understand? And in this realm, of course, because of duality and polarity, everything is predictable. When you put all of your attention on your body, all of your attention on the things in your environment, and all of your attention on linear time, then you've got to play by the rules of Newtonian physics. And Newtonian physics is all about the predictable. And because of Newtonian physics, there are certain laws that govern objects in the three-dimensional reality. And because of Newton, we can shoot a rocket to the moon and predict how long it's going to take to get there. Are you with me still? So then if you're living your life as a body local in space and time, and you're trying to predict your future, and the brain is an anticipation machine, every time you're trying to predict your future, you're laying down a known over an unknown. How many people understand? So, come on. So then, our formula then is to create coherence in the brain and heart. In order for you to do that, you've got to leave three-dimensional reality and enter another realm, time, the fourth dimension. And that is the speed of light. And when you become nobody, you take your attention off your body, you're not a body. When you take your attention off the people in your life that you identify with, you're no one. If you're not thinking about the things you own, the place you live, or time itself, you become no, in nothing, nowhere, and no time. And this is the door. This is the nexus to the quantum field. And now you become pure consciousness or awareness. And now you're moving closer to the eternal present moment. Are you with me still? Now... We have labored for years and we have worked really hard this week to be able to shed our identity and suppress the neocortex and the thinking memory bank and literally, literally become someone else, a consciousness in this realm called the quantum field where there's nothing material, the fertile void. And that is an infinite amount of space where there's nothing physical. How many people are with me? And you can linger there without a name now. You can linger there without wondering how long it takes. You can linger there without your problems. You're lingering in a place that you're dissociating from everything physical. And if you're no longer putting any of your attention or energy in this three-dimensional reality, all of a sudden now, there's another world that exists called the quantum world or the fifth dimension. Now, in this realm, this quantum world, there's nothing physical. It's made up of consciousness or thought. This is the realm of thought. And thought is infinite possibilities. Would you agree? How many thoughts could you have? Infinite. I equal to how you, how you think. So this is the realm where there's nothing physical. It's made of frequency or information because all frequency carries information or light or vibration, consciousness. And because nothing is physical here, it doesn't exist local in space and time, we could say everything exists as a possibility, non-local or what we call the wave function in quantum physics. Are you with me still? So if you're looking for something here, then you're back to the three-dimensional world. If you're trying to predict how your, your creation is going to happen, you're back to the Newtonian world again. So in this realm now, in the realm of time-space, there's infinite number of possibilities, so many potentials, and this is the unknown. And because there's an infinite amount of time in the quantum world, think about this, if time is infinite or time is eternal, it makes sense then, if you had all the time in the world, there are infinite possibilities of things you can do. How many people understand? That's the quantum field. Their time is so elongated that there's one long now. There's no past, there's no future. It's all happening when? Now. 
So then when you reach this point, and you start connecting to the quantum field, all of a sudden, you start experiencing less separation. You start experiencing more oneness, more wholeness. You start feeling connected to something greater. You're connecting to an energy, and you're no longer connecting to matter or ever, anything known. Are you with me still? Come on. So then, the only way that... Think about this. In the quantum, there is no space, and there is no time. So there was an experiment done called the aspect experiment. They took these two photons and they found each other on quantummatch.com. <laughs> and one of them said, man, I really like your particles. And the other one said, I like your particles too. And they said, well, let's get together and exchange some information. So when they started exchanging information, they started to bond together. Are you with me? And so then they said, okay, let's separate you two, that's enough. And they shot one to one side of the universe. And then they shot the other one to the other side of the universe. And they annihilated this one particle right here. And at the exact same time that they annihilated this particle, this one disappeared. Ex at the exact same moment. Now, if there was, this one disappeared a millisecond later or a milli, 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 milli second later, then it would have had to, information would have had to move through space and it would have created time. Yes or no? But if they disappear at the exact same time, then it means then there is no space there. Are you with me still? Which means there's a realm beyond space and time where there's nothing separate. So then if there's no space here, then there's no time that everything exists in the eternal now. Are you with me still? Yes. Come on. Yes. I know it's hard to swallow, but think about it. If there's no space, then you have an infinite amount of time, then you only have possibilities. And all possibilities exist as frequencies. And the way we experience moving through this realm is that we don't move anywhere. You can't move anywhere. There's no place to go. There's no place to go because there's no space. And if there's no space, there's no time. You're at the source of it all. And all you can do is change your frequency or change your consciousness, change your awareness of energy. And when you do, you can move through time and experience spaces by changing vibration or frequency. Are you with me still? You speed up here from one place to another, it takes time to do that. Yes or no? If you go faster, it takes less time. If you go slower, it takes more time. Well, in this realm, there's no place to go. All you do is change your frequency. You change your frequency to a faster frequency, then you experience a different dimension, a different time. How many people are with me? And there's infinite numbers of these that exist in the eternal present moment. So there's a frequency for health, for wealth, for a new relationship, a new job, <clears throat> for, for a mystical experience, they all exist as different dimensions. And the way we've talked about it this week, remember, is you go into the department store, you have a mirror over here and a mirror over here, and you look back at both of those mirrors and you see an infinite number of views this way and an infinite number of views this way. Yes? Those are dimensions. So then, is there a possibility in one of these dimensions, one of those boxes, where that problem doesn't exist? where the challenge doesn't exist? Yes or no? Yes. And could, is there a possibility where everything could be exactly the same in your life, except the only thing that's different is there's a solution to that problem? Yes, yes or no? Yes. It exists as a potential. If you can think it, it exists there. Yes or no? Yes. So then if you can get beyond your body, your environment and time and become pure consciousness, you're at the precipice of the unified field and I ask you to start tuning in to a greater frequency of oneness and wholeness. And you could find it, you could feel it, you could pay attention to it, you can stay aware of it, moment after moment after moment. You're not your body doing that, you're just consciousness. And this is consciousness, this is energy. And so you tune into frequencies, and when you do that, you begin to change from this realm into this realm. Are you with me still? Now think about this. <clears throat> The problem or condition in your life that has become the box that hasn't changed, 
you're meeting from the same level of consciousness, which means you're thinking the same way about it, you're reacting emotionally the same way about it, and those emotions then are energy, and you're producing the same energy every single day, and it's staying the same. Yes or no? So then, is it possible then to move into a realm where there's another box for you to experience, another reality to experience where that problem doesn't exist? Now, do you have to know how it's going to be resolved? Nope, none of your business. It's your job then to create a, a, a thought that you are outside of that problem. The best way I can describe it is you are out of that box in another box and all you have to do is bring up the feeling or the emotion of no longer being in that reality. And if you can bring up the energy or the emotion, now you're in a new box. Are you with me still? You don't have to have any thought about what it's going to look like. All you have to do is have the thought that you're outside of that reality into another reality. Are you with me still? Now, I said that when you wake up in the morning and you put your attention on the coffee maker or in the kitchen, you're putting your attention in the future, yes or no? And your body is following your mind right to that future, yes? Right to a known. So then is it possible then if you could unfold into a box where the problem is resolved and begin to change your energy and what would the energy be? Gratitude. For me, it's relief. I move to another box and it's just over and I just feel relief and I'm outside the box and I'm at a greater level of consciousness than everybody else that's contributing to that problem. Are you with me still? Including me. Did you hear that? So then, if I could get to that place, the zero-point field where everything is happening and I could unfold in the, into the future when, and I could be in that place, is it possible once I'm in that place as consciousness, not my body, that if I'm there, I could connect to my body in the field and draw my body to me? Are you with me still? And could my body follow my mind right to that future? But when is it happening? No. So you don't go anywhere. All you have to do is raise your frequency to a box where it doesn't exist. Are you with me still? Now, there's a caveat. Because if you do this and you return to your life, now remember, that box has everything to do with your consciousness. You are contributing to it energetically with your thoughts and feelings. Yes or no? Yes. So you're not immune or separate from it. You're part of the consciousness that's keeping everything the same with all the people and all the conditions. Yes or no? Yes. So then if you're drawing your body to the future in the present moment from the void or from the quantum field, and you react in the same way in your life to the same people and the same conditions, the door just closed. You, the door closed because now your body isn't going to follow your mind into the future. It's going to stay in that box because you're part of the consciousness that's creating it. Are you with me still? Turn the person next to you and explain.
So let's just use an example. Let's say that you have a dynamic in your job with a coworker that you just can't get along with or something isn't being resolved or you have an issue with some person in your life, your ex, I don't know, I'm making stuff up, but there's something in your life where you've done everything to try to change it matter to matter and nothing has worked. Would you agree then that it, you're a participant in that whole reality because if you're judging your coworker, if you're resenting your coworker, if you're angry with your coworker, if you're competing with your coworker, if you're resentful with your ex, if you're malicious with your ex, if you're angry with your ex, then you are keeping that reality the same because it's your energy keeping it the same and you're part of the problem. Are you with me still? Now, you're not doing anything wrong. You're just taking too long because those emotions are keeping you in that box. So then it would make sense then, you would have to navigate in your three-dimensional reality with such a level of awareness that you could not react. And so then, let's just imagine, you become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time. You become pure consciousness, and we'll take you through this process, and you unfold into that infinite, vast space. Why is that the quantum field? Because if you take away all the bodies, all the people, all the things, all the objects, all the places, you take away time itself, you take away the planets, the moons, the stars, the light from the stars, you take away everything physical or material, you're left with nothing but a big empty space. That is the quantum field. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And this field is rich in frequency and information and possibility. Are you with me still? So then if I ask you to find the frequency of oneness and wholeness and connect to it and stay present with it and become more aware of it and surrender to it moment after moment, you'll be moving away from everything material and you'll be moving closer to source energy. Are you with me still? And as you move closer and closer to it, not only will you feel more collect, uh, connected, but you will feel ele an elevated state, an elevated emotion. Yes or no? Not an emotion like your, with your body, but a frequency, an awareness. And in that realm, every thought in that realm has a frequency too. But those thoughts in that realm manifest a lot faster than the thoughts when you're in your physical body. Are you with me still? So then think about this. You become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, and you connect to a frequency of oneness and wholeness. You're in the quantum field where there's all possibilities. And I say to you, it's time to change boxes. It's time to move to another dimension. Your brain is going to create an image of a box, and all I want you to do then is imagine yourself in a, in a place, it could be in the void, where you feel, feel like it's resolved. You're at a greater level of consciousness than everybody in that box. You've got to get beyond your fear. You've got to get beyond your judgment. You've got to get beyond your competition. You've got to get beyond all those things and move to a greater frequency. Now, you're not your body, remember? <laughs> you're a consciousness, and you're placing your consciousness, just like you place your consciousness in the kitchen on the known, you're placing your consciousness on a box, a potential, an unknown, and you are going to imagine yourself outside of that world, outside of that box, in a greater frequency, in a greater level of energy, a greater level of gratitude, a greater level of relief. And from that place then, you are going to, in that elevated emotion, connect to your body and draw your body to you. And as long as you're in that state, in your waking life where you're feeling that elevated emotion, then your body is connected to that future. And now you're going to be drawn to that destiny. How many people understand? As long as you don't react to the conditions in your life. Because the moment you react to the conditions in your life and those reactions or that energy or those emotions have certain thoughts or certain frequencies, then the door closes because you're back in the known. And the unknown now you're separate from. How many people understand? So take out a piece of paper, or if you have a cell phone and it's better for you to use your cell phone, I don't know. And I want you to write down a name for the box you want to move out. You know, the Xbox. <laughs> the job box. The money box. The pain box. The boring box, whatever it is. 
and just name it as something. And I want you to draw a cube, like a box, a square or a cube. And then I want you to draw a little picture of you inside the box. Just a stick figure of you. You don't do any a Mona Lisa or anything, just a stick figure. Now, you got your box and you got it named? And you have a little picture of, a, of you inside the box? Now think about this. Think about the emotions that you feel about that box. Think about how you react to those conditions. Name those emotions. Are you frustrated? Are you fearful? Are you angry or are you resentful? That's the consciousness that's keeping the box the same way it is. Give me at least three or four emotions. Trapped. Uncertain, whatever it is. Fear. Just name it. while you're at it, write down the thoughts that, that you think about or the thoughts that you have when you think about this box. You know, like it's never going to change. That person would just die, then it would help me a lot. You know, whatever it is. You know how you think. We think. I don't know. You, we. It's too hard to change. That's the thought that I work on the most. It's never going to change. You know how you just can't see a possibility and you say to yourself, it's never going to change? Well, that thought has a frequency too. And that adds to reality. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts a signature. And as long as you're broadcasting the same signature into the field, everything's going to stay the same. So then, after you have a few thoughts that you write down, that when you think about this box that you want to become conscious of, give me at least three thoughts that are related to it. I hate that person, whatever it is. You know, that thought is what's contributing to the feeling or the energy that's keeping your box the same. And it's not that person, it's you that has to change your energy to get out of the box. And then I want you to write down if you had a little Google camera that followed you around all day long and then you got to watch yourself at the end of the day. Observe yourself, how you act or how you speak. How do you act when you think about or are near that condition, that challenge, that adversity? What do you do? What program do you run? You know, when you get uncomfortable, what is the program that you run? How do you behave? How do you speak? Do you rush? Do you push? Do you complain? Pick a fight, what do you do? Give me a couple of those. So we're all faced with great opportunities, brilliantly disguised as poss impossible situations. And in order for you to change boxes, you got to move to a greater level of consciousness, to a greater level of awareness, a greater level of energy, and it already exists in the field. And all I want you to do is just like looking in, seeing all those, mirror, those two mirrors and seeing the infinite numbers of you, all we're going to do is move from that room to an exact same room and in that exact same room, the one next door, that problem doesn't exist. 
Are you with me still? Now, draw a line, and underneath that, what you've just written, draw a box or a cube, and then draw yourself outside the cube with a big smile on your face. Just a big grin. And you can have a hairdo or not have a hairdo. I don't care. But a big smile. And now that you're outside of the box, I want you to think of the emotions you will feel when it's resolved. I just had a big one happen to me in December, and it took every amount of effort to restrain myself from reacting. But I didn't react the entire time. I just, just kept remembering there's another box. And every day, I just went to that box, and I drew my body to me. And when it happened, I... I, I, I well, it was actually, maybe it was, these, maybe it was January, but anyway, when it happened, I was so exuberant. I, I, I mean, it was just, an, I was just, I couldn't believe it. It was just that wonderful. I felt such relief, such joy, such freedom. So freedom is a good one. Relief is a big one. And, and, and all you have to do is remember that you are not going to be the consciousness of everything you've written down, you're gonna be in a different consciousness and all you have to do is raise your energy from the field, place yourself in that future box when, now, and then you are going to connect to that body of yours in the blackness and you are going to draw that body to you just like you drew your object to you with the same way you're gonna to connect to your body and with your heart, or with some energy, you're going to draw your body to you. How many people understand? So then the more you stay in the energy of your future in your normal life, the more you're connected to that, to that outcome. The moment you return back to a reaction, to an emotion, you just disconnected from the energy of your future. And now you're back to the energy of your past. And the door closes until you change your energy again. How many people understand? So now write down a few elevated frequencies or emotions you would feel when it resolves. Freedom, relief, joy. So for those of you who are streaming, in the realm of thought, the quantum, is it possible that it's just good enough to have the thought of the box and that thought has a frequency? Yes or no? You don't do anything. You just have to have the thought that there's another box that exists where the answer is there. And you are in that box and you just have to be at a greater level of energy, a greater level of consciousness, a greater level of awareness than everybody including you in that reality. And you just got to stay there, stay in that frequency and draw your body to it. And when you do it properly, it's dropping a big stone into a lake. You're producing a big ripple of waves. And if you keep doing that, you're going to wind up at that future. You're calling, you're sending a signal out and calling your body to it. Does that make sense? So here's how it's going to go. I'm going to have you close your eyes, and I am going to take you into a, uh, into a meditation, and I'm going to ask you to unfold as an awareness into this infinite space. I'm going to ask you to broaden your awareness and sense its depth in front of you, behind you, on both sides of you. I'm going to ask you to open up into this field. And when you become pure consciousness, nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, I'm going to ask you to connect to a frequency of oneness and wholeness and move towards that unified field. And I'm going to ask you to stay there. And I'm going to ask you to become more of it and less of you, to put more of your attention on the unknown part of the self and less attention on the known self. And I'm going to ask you to go deeper. Can you do that? When you get deep enough and you're in that field, I'm going to ask you 
to change boxes, I'm going to ask you to move to another box where that problem doesn't exist. And if you're in that realm, the thought of it produces a frequency because all thoughts have frequency and all thoughts are real there. So you select the potential that it doesn't exist. And when you tune into it, all I want you to do is tune into that elevated frequency called relief or freedom or joy. And when you're there and you're locked into it, then I'm going to ask you to, to become aware of your body in the void and I'm going to ask you to draw your body to you and I'm going to ask you to stay connected to it, stay aware of it and just keep drawing it to you and you're drawing your body into the future when? Now. How many people understand? You want to try it? We've gotten so many great emails from people having problems resolved in their life by just doing this. So let's get out of that box. What do you think? <clears throat> All right, let's do it. Glasses off, watches off, cell phones off. Sit up. Eyes closed. Take a breath. Relax your body feel your body. Endless
around you. Sit. to it.
become aware. There's endless space. Behind you. Sense it. Become more. Stay connected to it. In the blackness. Become the blackness. Stay there. In 
nothing. an awareness Tune in to a frequency of oneness, wholeness. Find it. Feel it.
to it. And remember, this feeling Find 
Pandit. Connect to it. Now be 
hub, a connection between the two. Be that body and that future now. Bring them together as one mind. Become that consciousness. Become. future. Feel it. Now. Stay there. And remember Feeling drawing you to you becoming feel feel it embody it. Stay there in the now. And remember this feeling it's your future, you now. Feel it in your heart. As if it's already happened. And remember Feeling now within you. Feel it with your heart. It's already happened. Now, slowly, bring your awareness back to a new body, to a new environment, to a whole new time. When you're ready, Open your eyes to another dimension, another box. And come back to the world of the senses.
That wasn't too hard, was it? As long as you don't react to your past present reality, you're no longer in the same energy of your past. And that's when you belong to your future. I promise you that just like your body follows your mind to the bathroom every morning, because that's where your consciousness and your energy is, your awareness is, your body's following your mind to the known. If you keep putting energy in that future, in the present moment, your body's going to follow your mind to the unknown in the exact same way. And it's going to open up a door in a way that you have never thought of. If you thought of it, you would have done it. It's going to come in a way that you least expect, that surprises you and leaves no doubt that it's come from your connection to a greater mind. And it's going to inspire you to do it again, again, and again. All you have to do is understand that all possibilities exist in the eternal now. And when you get beyond your identity, your body, your present reality, <clears throat> the things you own, place you need to be in time itself, and you unfold into that place where thoughts are real, the thought of that problem being resolved already exists, and it is just one of many potentials. And if you can just remember that you are outside of that problem, that it's already resolved, and feel the elevated state, a greater consciousness, you're outside, you've evolved out of it, you're in a new reality, a new opportunity, and you can stay in the present moment and memorize that feeling to remember what that feels like. You are in that future, right in the present moment. And if you can hook into your body, and the longer you stay in that present moment, the more you are drawing your body to you. And as long as you don't react in your life, I swear to you, a door is going to open. It is important for you then to review those thoughts every day so that they don't slip by your awareness unnoticed. It is important to review the feelings that cause you to think the memories of your past and the problems of your past returning back to the old state of being. It's important to not react to those conditions because those reactions are emotions that produce the same energy or the thought producing the same frequency, producing the same reality. And nothing changes because you're separate from source, you're separate from your connection to the field. Unfolding into the blackness, into that unlimited place where all possibilities exist, there's nothing physical there that you can experience with your senses. But if you can connect to that field and understand that when you are there and you unfold as no body, no one, no thing, nowhere, and no time, that you are no longer your body. You are pure consciousness. And in the realm of consciousness, of thought, of frequency and energy, you can connect to any possibility that a thought of you being out of that present reality has a frequency. And the longer you're conscious of that energy in the void, in the unified field, the more you are drawing your body to you. And when you do that enough times, I swear to you, doors will open in ways that you least expect, and it's all going to make sense to you. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you all for joining. We'll see you next time. Thank you.